Juice. Let's get into the media to connect and learn and educate. That's what Victors with Victors is doing here. You know, it's bringing more information to the people of Kenya and to the people throughout the world about Kenya and about the Victors travels that are educating people in so many ways. So I'm so grateful for this YouTube channel that Victor started and that, you know, it's growing. You know, his Instagram, uh, B underscore boy underscore Vic, uh, it grew uh, 300 followers uh, in four days here during his visit in Peru. Because people, because a good vibe, you know, 400 like... 400 followers. 400. That's a lot. In four days, 400. That's 100 followers a day. You know, your vibe attracts your tribe and here... Victor was very much well received. They picked up on that vibe. So there is a Nairu clarity in the connection. I don't know how it's going to grow, but it's beyond the individual. It's up to the group. Sometimes you see the moon on that side. Well, they're awesome. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> once again, welcome to a new episode of uh, Victor's with Victor, right here in Cusco, the secret valley of Cusco. As you can see, Behind us, this blessing, it's been a blessing all through the journey. And you guys have been watching uh, Francisco on my videos. But really, I think we just got into it because we were overwhelmed by everything that, that was happening and every experience that I've been having here in uh, Peru. So this is uh, my mentor and uh, my life coach and my yoga teacher, wellness teacher, my Thai massage teacher, and a lot of things, you know, and now he's brought me out here in the world to experience power in a different way than he's always taught me. Uh, and so I've got to see life, I've gotten to see life in a, from a very dis different perspective and just see the power of the art. So I know I can say so much about him, but I want to give him an opportunity to introduce himself as we get into the experience, the history, the knowledge, and the wisdom of the mother heart. And it's a really great honor and a perfect time to be able to interview him uh, here in this sacred place and uh, in the secret valley as uh, this is the epicenter of power i can say so much and uh, i'm not sure how long this video is gonna be but regardless i'm hoping you guys are going to be glued all through because we're gonna get deep in this video allow me to introduce son of marita <laughs> uh, the grandson I probably never said it in any of these videos, but I want to say the grandson of uh, the president of Peru, 1975 to 1980, somebody who also brought a turn into the per Peruvian government and is a blessing to this country and is highly celebrated in every corner of Peru and the globe at large. Welcome Victors with Victor, welcome to Peru. Okay, this is a heart. Of Peru, this is the heart of the Inca Empire. My name is Francisco Morales Bermudez. I am the co-director of Synergy Yoga. Uh, our website is synergy.yoga. Our YouTube channel is Synergy Yoga Wellness. Really grateful to be here with my brother Victor. Uh, he just brought it. He brought that beautiful ashe, is what we like to call that beautiful spirit of Kenya 
representing here through dance and the cultural exchange gathering that we cultivated in the city of Lima through Nairu, Nairobi to Peru. We are here and we are not giving up on positivity. We're gonna keep it flowing and we're gonna keep it going. So as brothers, we're here to help one another out. The purpose of synergy or the philosophy is together we're stronger. You've been tired at some point. You know, you felt like you're alone. You're never alone. And here we are by this beautiful waterfall. As Nyambura, Victor's mother, communicates, this is free medicine, okay? So tap into your free medicine wherever you're at. And this is what this, mes this message, this, give this waterfall gives us that message in a very loud manner, in a very beautiful, majestic manner. Look how beautiful she is, this beautiful squirt. You know, she, she is she's squirting. She's squirting. And she's bringing, so this water is channeled from the, from the glaciers up high in the Andes. We're at 2,800 meters above sea level. And here, where we, and by we, I mean me, Brother Salim Rollins, who's now holding it down for uh, Victor, so he can, son of Liz, so he can be in Kenya taking care of the youth in Kibera while Victor is here. Running, he's running the martial arts program. Shout out to Salim Rollins and Brother Dante in Washington, D.C. We're a collaboration of brothers who help one another out to expand this dialogue between Peru and Kenya and Mexico in our journeys and learning from ancestral knowledge and bringing it into today with respect to ancestral knowledge and really bringing those lessons and carrying them on and living them through our bodies. We are healthy bodies. We love to dance. We like to move. You know, we keep that vibration and that kind of physical manifestation of what this beauty all around us channels and gives us. So here we are in Peru, the largest variety of microclimates in the world. Okay, the largest variety of birds in the world. The birds tell us a lot about life and how the earth is going. So the fact that so many birds flock here to fly and, and, and feed says a lot about this earth that we are walking right now here in Peru. So we welcome you guys. As far as what I'm here to communicate, um, communicate positivity, communicate collaboration, communicate the fact, you know, just in these mountains, you can't help it but be humble. So be humble. Humble doesn't mean looking down at the ground and feeling bad and, you know, humble means being grateful. Humble means being strong and moving in balance with the earth and moving in balance with your family and moving in balance with ancestral knowledge that we are always tapping into, you know. Victor Onyangu, he's, he's a b-boy, he's a dancer, you know, this is modern dance, but he has the ability to flow between different places and bring that knowledge into the b-boy culture, which sometimes, you know, doesn't know about these things, you know, and sometimes we're in this concrete cage, but to see the sunrise, to see the sunset and bring this knowledge through the concrete, because the plant moves through the concrete, as you all know. So, yeah, my brother. Yeah, I mean, coming from Peru, how has life been for you, you in Peru as a Peruvian? So, as a Peruvian, I was born here. I moved to Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. You want me to share a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I moved... You want to be maybe loud, a little bit Yeah, so I was, born, I was born in Peru. <laughs> Luscious. So I was born in Peru. Uh, yes, my grandfather was president of the country, he helped establish the constitution and bring freedom back to the press and bring music back um, to the voice of the multiculturalism that is Peru. He grew up in and would live in the house that he grew up throughout his upbringing. Um, he didn't take any salary from the government. Uh, shout out to my grandfather, my namesake. I learned a lot from him. 
uh, and I try to live, you know, and one thing that he told me, always take the stairs. And if you are a physical fit person, then you are a spiritual person. You don't have to go worship in the common church. He was a Christian man. You know, that's fine. He said, if you are a physical fit person, you are practicing spirituality. You know, don't judge someone else according to how they believe. You know, just observe them and see how they carry themselves in the world. You know, because a lot of people preaching, a lot of people preaching loud about their flag, about their church, about their soccer team, how it's better than the other person's soccer team. But at the end of the day, we are all spiritual beings and we can't create separation by who you believe and what God you praise and blah, 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 la, da, da. You know, that's a trap. So, you know, shout out to my grandfather. Yes, he was a president. And sometimes there's a lot of skepticism about what that means, you know, to be a president of a country. He didn't reside in the royal palace. He lived in his house the whole time. He didn't want to live in the palace. You know, he wanted to stay in his house which I really, I'm fond of him, of that. You know, I, I think it's beautiful. He wanted to stay humble. And when other people wanted to lift him up and make him all this and that and glam, you know, everyone wants the glam, but it's so much better to walk with your Kenyan shoes and feel your feet in the earth rather than feel yourself above the earth. You are never above the earth. If you fall into that trap, you're a sucker. And we are not here to be suckers. Because we got to make the best out of life, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so Francisco, talking about spirituality, what does spirituality mean to you? Spirituality to me, it means uh, being humble, living, living your life purpose with spirit, living your life purpose with energy, learning about what your life purpose is every day. And change is constant. So every day waking up humble and supporting one another. So right here in the Sacred Valley of Peru, we have a lot of physical representations of spirit. You know, they worship the earth in this Pachamama earth worshiping culture. They worship the sun, the ocean, the Mama Cocha that we got to get into yesterday in mm -hmm. Lima, very vibrant ocean. Um, yeah, here we go. So the trilogy is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You also have the different trilogies of the serpent. And these are all physical manifestations of different spiritual beliefs. In the Andean culture, it's the serpent moving in the subterranean plane under the earth, the puma moving on the earth, and the Andean condor with the second largest wingspan of all the birds on the planet, you know, in the celestial plane. This number three, which is all divisible into nine. And the representation of nine has been something that has been coming up when we started this journey. Shout out to Jan our sister nine. Jan nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's funny that came out. Yeah. So um, as a Peruvian who, who was born in Peru and then moved to the United States, Washington, Washington DC, and then came back. What is your connection to Peru right now? So, uh, you know, when some when you're taken out of where you were born and you're taken somewhere else, um, you run the list the risk of losing your culture mm. and your identity, and sometimes you run the risk of kind of like as a child you know the child needs sometimes consistency right um so for me but you have to flip the switch into positivity so to flip it into positivity and being born somewhere pretty amazing you know that i consider this country of peru very amazing moving into washington dc the capital of politics of the united states of america and during the times of the crack times, you know, when crack was being introduced into the United States by the CIA uh, to kill the African-American population uh, in the United States. 
Okay. Um, so, so that was the goal. That so that was, was the goal. Yeah, that oh, was okay. the goal of crack. Oh, okay. You know, to make cocaine cheap and very toxic, even more toxic, because cocaine is already toxic to itself. Here, the coca leaf is sacred, and they, they worship it because it gives you energy and strength. And it also, in your body, helps to process carbohydrates. You eat a lot of potatoes, you know? Mm. So, um, very healthy leaf. It's not a drug. It doesn't get you high. It, it expands your pulmonary system. It helps you breathe up in these mountains. Mm. But it was made into this powder of cocaine um, and sold for profit. And a lot of the narco traffickants make a lot of money. You know, they enslave a lot of farm workers, burn a lot of their crops to make them work in the coca because there's a demand in the north for this crop cocaine that ends up killing people and creating some violence. So then they made the cocaine even cheaper because mm -hmm. cocaine wasn't affordable for the black population in, in the United States. They made it even cheaper and more toxic intentionally, intentionally to help them kill each other. Mm. You know, they just like, it was like, here, here's some poison, kill yourself. So that's crack. You know, for you guys, new generation that are not aware, a lot of beautiful things came out of Washington, D.C., like the go-go music. Um, so I moved to, to Washington, D.C. during these times. I love the go-go music. It was also, Washington, D.C. is an international city. So I, let a, I learned a lot from my Iranian friends, Lebanese friends, like people from Argentina, all over the world. So it gave me this, like, global education. You know, that made me a more global perspective person. And, you know, I worked in nonprofits in Washington. And now I get to bring that knowledge back home. But as someone that moved out of their home to Washington, D.C., um, I always kind of wanted to learn more, you know, about Peru. And I think that happens, you know, my, my friend Dante, I was talking to him about it. He's an African-American. He wants to learn more about Africa, mm. you know, because he and, and this is like my lifespan within my lifespan. I was taken and brought back, you know, but for him, it's generations mm. of being taken from the African continent and now wanting to go back. You see what I'm saying? So he wants to establish his route. Yeah, he wants to establish his route. Mm. So that's something I'm doing, but also something I want to encourage is that this Pachamama culture and this earth culture belongs to everyone, yeah. you know? Because I have a Peruvian passport, doesn't mean it just belongs to me. Right. It belongs to Victor's, it belongs to Victor, you know, it belongs to Salim, Dante. And I think that's the beauty of yeah. synergy, right? Yeah. Yeah, because it brings people from different parts. Like, I'm here. If it wasn't for synergy rising, then I wouldn't be here. So I think with the beautiful work you do, I'm just curious to understand, when and how did you get into this practice and the work that you do? Maybe you want to tell our viewers. Yeah, so um, the evolution of the work I do, the evolution of the work I do um, started when I lived in Florida, uh, went to University of Miami, and I wanted to work in conservation because I always lived in a city and I appreciated the, the connection. We're trying to find the perfect space between the camera <laughs> angle right now. So I'm moving around. Um, and Victor's right, you know, he's on, he's on the mic. So I started to go more, you know, get, go camping. I was a city kid. You know, I was from Lima. Lima's a, a population 11.3 million. I moved to Washington, D.C., which is more green in the city of Lima, but I started to feel medicine and nature. You know, I, I started, this may sound weird to some people, but I started talking to trees as a young boy of five years old, okay? As a young boy, I had trauma. My stepmother used to beat us, you know, like my mother had moved to the United States. Uh, my father was never around because he was just, uh, you know, he was trying to build his professional career. So he wasn't really occupied with being a father. Um, and that happens sometimes uh, to a lot of young men. 
you know, who lost, who lose their way, it's because their father's not around. Um, but we find other male role models. So I wanted to be a male role model for other young men, you know, and I wanted to take care of myself. So I started to be, go camping. Um, I did it psilocybin uh, mushroom. And you know, these are plant medicine things that are more legal now. Back then they were more weird to talk about. Um, but humanity have, has been around these uh, medicinal ways for so long that the government and the medicinal kind of pharmaceuticals has, has wanted to kept you away from it uh, because they want you to make you dependent on their God and their medicine and their pharmaceuticals. Because if you reach to other means and other ways, then it, they lose business. Okay, so let's be real. Okay, so we're here to be real with Victors with Victors. This is a no bullshit institution. Uh, we don't accept bullshit. And that's why we keep each other in check. Because sometimes I got bullshit going on. Sometimes we all do. But that's what brothers do. We keep each other real and we don't walk away from each other. You know, we got to do that. It's essential. So I started going camping myself uh, with some friends. And then I was like, wow, look at this medicine. You know, I want to bring this medicine to my friends and to the youth. And my, I felt a sense of responsibility. So I started working with a nonprofit called the Na National Audubon Society um, that observed the migration of birds and the, how the health of different ecosystem is reflected by how birds stop migrating somewhere or migrate somewhere more. And Audrey Peterman from Jamaica in Earthwise Productions and Frank Peterman, who was a lawyer for the Black Panthers, uh, a movement of justice in the United States. And then I went to go work and run youth programs for the National Parks Conservation Association, taking kids from LA, Crenshaw High School, Dorsey High School, uh, Washington DC, Miami, San Francisco, um, Bay Area, camping, and writing grants. So there's a power in learning to learn, you know, how to write and how to read. And it helps you to learn how to communicate and articulate and connect to more people. So, and travel. So I started taking youth camping and then I started to see the effect it had on them. Because the effect it has on you is going to be different but that different was similar at the same time. So the connection of nature broke boundaries within our own walls emotionally and energetically in these youth. And now some of these youth were able to be better leaders in their own community, better, you know, better men, better young men, better young women, better fathers, better mothers. So the connection with nature is something that we all go back to. This is the ancestral knowledge. The one common language is dance, like we've been talking about. And a lot of these dance was done in the homage to the earth, too. So, you know, just bringing it back to Nairu family. Um, we know we've been sharing a lot of dance and we've been talking a lot of hip hop with Brother Jordi out in Ventanilla, uh, Peru. He's been running a beautiful program there, Mi Peru. And, you know, it's really important that we keep that perspective of dance as a common language. Some of these youth were, were crying. You know, to me, dance and nature are essential. Movement. Yes, movement and nature. And nature inspires us to move. Nature makes, is the original music, the original soundtrack <laughs> of humanity is nature. You see? Listen. This is the shaker. <laughs> I mean, we are the epicenter of life. Uh, they call it um, the belly bottom. Yes. Right? Uh, and there's so much life here, you know, just in the mountains, evidently here behind us. And we are so blessed to be here. It feels very powerful. I'm, I'm just curious to understand and for our viewers, what is life? In your opinion. What is life? Um, yeah. 
life is living. You know, life is living and embodying your purpose and courage, right? So the word courage comes in Spanish, comes from coraje. Corazón is the root of courage. So moving with your heart is living, right? So the original pa, 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 pa. That's the, the drum beat, you know? Pa, pa. So living your life purpose and living with courage is, is, is life. And moving with hu humility to that life and to that purpose and never giving up. You know, no matter what turns and what weaves it, it, it takes you in and out of. Resilience, which has been the, the theme of our journey yeah. uh, through the Nairu event. Yeah, yeah, I guess like um, I've really learned a lot from you and uh, I'm still learning a lot. And that's the reason I have you on Victor's with Victor. Because Guru is my Victor. He, him and Brother Salim have been my mentors for years. To a point where they have me at the level of the same leadership as them. Because they trust the mentorship and the leadership they built in me. Uh, but uh, what is your understanding of the history of the Incas and the religion here? So... The religion is a, uh, you know, it's it's very powerful because it, it embodies, it's earth embodying and earth worshipping. So like when people are about to eat, for example, mm. before they eat, they always pour a little water or drink onto the earth. Mm. You know, so it's always moving in observation of her and moving to that pole pole, you know, pole pole, here it's like poco a poco. Like moving to that rhythm of, of the earth and because you can see here the waterways like look at this this, this town has been around for years yeah. you know but it doesn't look toxic yeah. you know it like the water is the most powerful the water is life like these are things we talk about in all religion mm. all religion goes back to the earth and I think the etymology of the word is this unity right so the word religion has become toxic over time um, because it was because religion has also been used to, to manipulate people and control people, you know, according to, you know, to to maintain the power in, in certain regimes, you know, and it's really important that we see through that, you know, in yoga, you know, we are I'm a yoga teacher as well, we, you know, we call Maya the veil of illusion, so to see through the veil of illusion into the omnipresent what is always present and what is always present is this life this beautiful vibration you know like we are all microcosms of 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 stardust you know of stars and sometimes we are we're giving this this uh politic and this commercial to create separation you know like now again so you have, like you know even i you have the lgbtq movement that just keeps expanding into like lgbtq R, S, 2, L, Q, that's confusing, you know, so we have a lot of propaganda that creates confusion, and when people are confused, then, the, then people can take power over you, you know, so this Inca culture was very clear, you know, in the yin and the yang, the, 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 the forces of nature and creation, and, 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 uh, fertilization you know of, of the earth and the seed of the earth and the coming together and sexuality being natural not being ashamed of it you know uh, and I think that that you know we've been controlled through sexual oppression as well you know and you know for me it's like you know make love like experience living experience being in nature experience eating good food from the earth without chemical GMOs that that there's no seeds in watermelons now there's no seeds in grapes <laughs> how can a watermelon how can a, a, something <laughs> reproduce without the seed you know we are becoming chemical people so get back to nature that's life you know it's that simple it doesn't have to be extremely overthought so we're all stuck you know some people think a lot and that's okay that's beautiful because it helps us to understand and vocalize, like Brother Charlie, child to Brother Charlie, who's been on the channel before, on the Victor's, he's yeah. a thinker, 
Yeah. You know? And he lives in Kenya now. He's, this brother is brilliant. He speaks Swahili fluently now. Yeah, Charlie McElroy. Shout out to Charlie. Yeah. Shalom. <laughs> Shalom. <laughs> you know? This man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's thinkers that help us. And, you know, we're all one. We're here to help each other. And I'm a mover. You know, I think, but I don't articulate quite as well sometimes. I'm more of a mover. I'm a martial artist. I learned from my mestre, Cobra Mansa. You know, shout out to the mestre. And that's how Salim and I united through mm -hmm. the arts of Papua mm -hmm. Angola. So, you know, get into the arts, get into the movement arts and dance. That's life, you know, that's life. Make love to your sweetheart, you know, be kind to each other and move and, and move your heartbeat, sweat. Every day move, every day walk, you know, do something. And something leads to something. Like my grandfather, my namesake says, you know, people that are physical, and are moving but do it with humility and do it with like an honor of why you are doing it mm. you know so when you're doing it do it with purpose you know not just do it to burn a calorie or to look with your six pack some people got six pack but inside their gut is rotten you know <laughs> so not everything that 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 uh, glitters is gold you know so to answer your question Life is movement. You know, we've been talking about that quite a bit today, actually. Yeah, life is movement. And this is the movement right now. Victor through Victor is, yeah. is the movement that we're in. So, Guru, we are in the land of uh, the legendary Tupac Amaru. Yes. You want to tell our viewers a little bit about him and then tell us what he was fighting for and why he ended up being killed. So... Hmm. So, when the Spanish came, the Spanish conquistadores, conquerors came, uh, they came at a time that there was a, a rift between brothers, mm. okay? So, because there was a rift between brothers, they were able to, to like, sneak in, right? So, that says something, just right there. Divide That's and conquer. Divide and conquer. The brothers were you know empire in the Inca Empire were already dividing themselves and because of that the Spanish were able to infiltrate and kill and take over okay so a lot of tribes there's inter-tribal warfare that happens and then what you know through marketing and media push people against each other because they're passionate and sometimes too much fire burns you know so you have to learn how to like control your flame so you don't burn each other, burn yourself, you know, and that's to your relations and your community. Mm -hmm. So when the Spanish came to reel it back to that, the brothers were fighting. They were able to ca capitalize on that and, and conquer. Now, years later, Tupac Amaru was the last rebel of the resistance of the Incas. And he and he's, he was made more popular to today's um kind of uh, generation because of uh, Tupac Shakur's mom who was a Black Panther and she was a well-studied woman and she knew about Tupac Amaru and named her son Tupac Shakur. I don't know what Shakur stands for but I know Tupac is, is in reference to Tupac Amaru. Tupac Amaru, the last rebel resistance of the Inca Empire, also his family was caught and killed in front of him before the Spanish drew and quartered him in the in the plaza in the town of Cusco. And this was to intimidate him. To intimidate his followers. Right. You know, right. once he was caught, they, they wanted this to be the end of the rebellion. You know, now the rebellion takes shape in different ways. It doesn't have to happen with a gun. You know, you can be a rebel and be doing Victors with Victor and be sharing information and be building community throughout the world and be giving information to people so they take care of themselves. I'm a rebel! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can be a rebel and be a dancer. You can be a rebel and be a singer. You know, you don't gotta got a gun to be a rebel. You can be a rebel and be a father. You can be a rebel and be a good mother. You know, that's rebellious nowadays. Mm. Be a good farmer. You know, without toxins in your food, 
and, and, and communicate positive information to your children, you know? So that to me is being a rebel. But Tupac, you know, see, so he was the last rebel rebellion of the Inca Empire. Uh, later on in Victor's trip, we're gonna go to Ollantaytambo, which is the last fortress of the Incas, that the last battle stand against the Spanish. It was also a place of observation of the stars because the Andean cosmology moved in harmony with the stars. They looked up, they didn't look down. Mm -hmm. Now we're looking down. They're forcing you to look down. Yeah, they're forcing you to look down through these little computers that, you know, are fit into your pocket. And, you know, we got to keep looking up. So we're trying to share positivity in the media and in these little phone computer platforms to give people more space to shut down their media and more and more positive knowledge, you know, because the phone is a thing now everyone's got one um but yeah so we're gonna go to Ollantaytambo later we're definitely gonna do some video there with victor yeah. it's a powerful powerful temple and you know there's portals there that the the, the incas traveled with to other parts mm. of, of peru it's a very high energy high vibrational ancestral land and this ancestral land you know there's a lot to learn from the incas such rich history yeah, I believe in reincarnation. I believe that we are re reincarnations of spirit. So my color and who I am doesn't make, you know, this belongs to you too is what I'm trying to project. Yeah. Uh, yes. So this beauty belongs to you. Yeah, Tupac Amaru, uh, for me, I was telling Guru, I feel like Tupac Shakur was a reincarnation of Tupac Amaru. Yes who ended up being killed again, you know. And uh, you want to maybe get into the story of how they killed Tupac Am Amaru? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, how they killed him is, like, like I was saying earlier, before they killed him, they gathered his family, his children, his love, his sweetheart, his wife, and they killed his kids. They made him watch, they peeled his eyes open made him watch how they killed his children and his wife in front of him, you know. And then they tied all his limbs, his feet, his hands to horses. Strong horses. Strong horses. And the horses pulled his limbs out of his body. So they killed him alive, pulled his limbs out from his body drawn and quartered him in the main plaza and this was the spanish yeah this is spanish the spanish conquistador is the spanish inquisition they also the the kind of the business plan to conquering another culture was to put your spiritual center on top of the other culture spiritual center so they put this church uh it's a dominican church i believe and i have nothing against the dominicans i have no, you know i'm there's great people everywhere, you know. I'm not. I'm not. A, my bro, one of my brothers is a priest. I love the guy, you know. I, all good, you know. So, it's just how you work, do your work, and it's good to have this knowledge. So, they put the church on top of the temple of Coricancha, was which was the temple of worship for the Incas, and you know to kind of like take away their sacred space. Now, a lot of people had heard about this temple of Coricancha, which is in the heart of Cusco, and they didn't really see it, obviously, because there was this massive church on top of it. Mm -hmm. But there was an earthquake, and I don't know the exact date. I think it was the 1950s or 40s. Mm -hmm. And the earthquake moved the, the Dominican church out, and the temple of Coricancha rose up, and we'll go see it. Whoa. Yeah. And it's a it's an amazing the stonework you know people come here they still don't understand how these massive stones which are comparable to like the pyramids in egypt were moved and created um so so it speaks a lot to the culture that they were able to build these amazing places but you know they didn't have a lot of vices they ate good food they moved 
you know they made they they they, they made love in nature all the time i would imagine because they were eating good and moving mm -hmm. so they were probably fucking a lot too mm -hmm. and that's beautiful you know and and i think that, you know there's a lot of shame in sexuality there's a lot of shame in like taking your shoes off and putting your feet in the earth there's a lot of shame in drinking from nature like we got to get back into that people uh, yeah. you know everyone's striving from the glam but this is natural Por el oso. Por el oso. Por el oso. Yeah, I'm really glad to be here. And uh, now you see why I had to come out here and get this information from this land. So subscribe, like, share, and comment. Let us know what you'd like to know. And let us know what you appreciate. Because for me, feedback is really powerful. And the reason I'm here is I'm giving Guru feedback on his powerful wisdom. And if we don't keep this wisdom, then the next generation is not going to know about this. For us, it's not about numbers, but it's about this information being there so that our next generation is not misinformed or misguided on the history and uh, help us share this um, powerful information and wisdom with the people around you, your loved ones and your friends as well. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep sharing this. Remember to go to um, Synergy Yoga Wellness on YouTube and subscribe to that channel. Uh, Guru will be sharing a lot of information on wellness and what really helped me and walked me through my pain and injuries uh, from break dancing. And also information about anatomy, yoga, movement, martial arts, African movement, and many, many more guys. I can't really, this is just the beginning of the journey and we're gonna keep going. Like he said, for me, life is movement. Life should be movement. And so we just want to keep moving and keep this going. But we need your support. We need this information not kept with just you, but also shared across with young people. Uh, for me as a young person, I really think and I know that I walked out of the ignorance that I was in with, without this much information. And I got it and I think it really helped me. It really saved me in being like, a righteous person in my own way i'm not always righteous and i have wrong people i have but you know i'm finding my path slowly by slowly slowly by slowly and making peace with my past poco, as well poco. and so poco poco pole pole despacito <laughs> <laughs> yes and so i'd really like to share my journey and my path with a lot of young people and so i request you to keep sharing these videos and also join the synergy journeys as they share with us wisdom, wellness, and powerful information. Something to close with. This is not the last video, bro. We're still gonna learn some more wisdom and get- Attitude of gratitude. Attitude, Attitude of gratitude, gratitude man, family. Go. Yeah, move. What is move your, your body. What is your closing remark? Uh, closing remark, um, go give a hug to someone in your family. Move a little bit today. Take a deep inhale, deep exhale. Shake it, shake it, put your feet on the earth, put your feet on the earth, feel the sun rays, feel the free medicine, Nambura's message, you know, feel the free medicine, it's around you, give a hug, feel the heartbeat, heart to heart hugs, you know, this is no bullshit, like, don't get caught up in the trap, you know, of wanting this and that, you know, feel the goods, feel the gifts, support each other. Attitude of gratitude. Movement is medicine. Movement is life. Keep dancing. Ahí está.